Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's Biology class. I'm Miss Angler and in today's video I'm going to give you my predictions for paper two for those of you who are rewriting your matric exams now on the 23rd of May. This video is intended for people who wrote their matric last year in 2021 and are rewriting now to improve their marks. However, if you are in matric this year and you're writing your June exams, you should stay tuned because all the tips I give now you can apply to the questions that you may see in your own paper, depending on what topics, of course, you've covered in class. Now, again, I'd like to remind you that these are my own predictions, things that I've seen in the patterns of exams, how I've you know noticed certain questions coming up every year versus some questions that appear and then disappear and then reappear type of thing. I'd look for a pattern and my predictions are also based off of the fact that I mark at the end of the year. I'm a senior marker and so I have some experience on how they ask the questions as well as how they answer them or how they expect you to answer them so you can get those full marks. So let's look into question one, multiple choice questions. Now I just want to remind you that meiosis was taken out of paper one, it's now only in paper two. And I've seen a lot of more questions on meiosis in the multiple choice sections. It's quite a nice common question to get because the questions are straightforward. They want to know how many um, cells are there at the end of meiosis in the picture or how many chromosomes, you know, that kind of thing. They also like to ask you things based off of any kind of disorders that come out of meiosis, maybe like Down syndrome. They want to know, do you know the basics around that? The next common questions I see in multiple choice are on evolution and fossils. So something like um, the names of certain fossils, maybe uh, where they were found, as well as some questions on identifying very basic structures on skulls. Um, and you might not get pictures, so they expect you to know these kinds of things, you know, off the top of your head, like, do you have a brow bone? Yes, no, absent, present, that kind of thing. Now, when it comes to like evolution questions, they seem to uh, quite frequently ask questions about terminology in evolution. So they want to see, can you tell the difference between the words observation, theory and fact and hypothesis? And they put this in the multiple choice section because they make the statements very similar to one another. So you have to be very well versed uh, on the differences to be able to select the cor correct option in the multiple choice. Now, when it comes to the terminology section, there are three things that I've picked up that come up every year and they seem to love asking these kinds of questions. So the first one is they like to ask, what is an undifferentiated cell? which is a stem cell. And I think they ask that one a lot because a lot of people forget about it. Again, you, you rush over your studying, you don't pay attention to that because you, you, you think it's not important, but stem cell comes up a lot. The next word that comes up a lot is karyotype. And karyotype, remember, is how we arrange our chromosomes. Now, the final terminology that I see very, very often, so prepare to see it at some point, is when they ask for the type of bond. So sometimes they ask you, what is the bond in between proteins? So you're going to say peptide. What is the bond between our nitrogenous bases? Well, that's hydrogen bonds. And they like to ask those two because people forget about them again, and they confuse them with each other. Um, a big key one, though, is please, everybody, there is no such thing as a polypeptide bond. No such thing. Okay. It's a confusion between polypeptides and peptide bonds and somehow those two words have been fused together that doesn't exist now we're still in question one and this is particularly the 1.3 questions the a b both or none questions and what i've noticed in this topic is they like to ask questions that are very very similar in the a b both or none so what i mean is they give you a definition and then the words are very similar like genome and genotype or gene and uh, genome. They want to see, do you actually know the difference between those words? And so often words that are very similar to one another come up here. Now, another thing I regularly see in the AB both or none section is fossils. And they will have like a location of the fossil and then the names like Taong, Child, Mrs. Plays, 
or if not the actual names of the fossils, but rather who discovered that fossil. Now, still in question one, um, 1.4, I think this question is going to be a meiosis question. They love asking some kind of like crossing over or allele question. What they're trying to see is, do you understand how crossing over works, how the exchange of alleles work, and could you draw what the cells look like? after this process has happened and that's a very common question that they seem to go back to all the time it shows your understanding of how meiosis actually works now for the final questions that i see in question one i think there's going to be some kind of like karyotype or a dna profile question i'm leaning towards more the dna profile question you know where you have like the murderer and then you have the suspects or you have the paternity test so you have the child the mother and the fathers the suspected fathers so expect to see something like that uh, the alternate, uh, sitting in the same vein, is having some kind of karyotype and you're identifying what disease this person has, which is probably going to be Down syndrome. They'll ask you, how do you know it's Down syndrome? How do you know it's a male or a female? And you have to look for the X and the Y chromosomes, that kind of thing. The final question in question one may be some kind of phylogenetic tree. Now, I think it's going to be on humans. Um, they only really reserve the harder phylogenetic trees for later on. So if it is in the beginning, it's probably going to take the format of a very basic human genetic tree. So in other words, you know, they have like all the different stages of hominids on it. So like Af uh, Australopithecus africanus, afarensis, then Homo habilis, uh, erectus, all the way up to sapiens. They might ask you basic questions. This phylogenetic tree question, however, can come up later in the exam, but then it's going to be a little bit harder and you're going to need to know a little bit more detail. But I'm going to talk about that when I get to question two and three. Now, getting into question two and question three, these are, of course, the longer questions. You're going to need a lot more detail to answer these. And any of my predictions that I mentioned now could fall into two or three, but I'm just going to go in the order of perhaps they might appear in this way in the exam. Starting off with a DNA question. Now, I think this question is going to be the protein synthesis version. Um, again, they haven't asked that in a very long time. It might even be something like DNA replication, which again is not a very common question and every now and then examiners like to throw it in for some difficulty. Now, the next question I foresee in the question two or three is going to be a pedigree diagram of some kind. So pedigree diagrams are often linked in two ways. So they either ask you a sex linked question on that. So they're going to give you hemophilia, red, green, color blindness, or remember, they can give you any other sex linked disorder. Remember to look out for the X because remember that's where the sex linked disorder is carried or they are going to ask you an autosomal disorder. Remember, which is. Just when you, you use the big and small letters, so you use a big A or a little A. And my next prediction links to a biotechnology question. Now, they seem to circle between two biotechnology questions, between cloning and then uh, biotechnology in the bacterial cell and making insulin and using the plasmid. So they sort of bounce between those two. And they've been doing a lot, a lot, a lot of cloning over and over again for the past few years. So I think it only makes sense that they should be doing the biotechnology question on the plasmid, which is remember when we take the plasmid out, we cut out a piece, insert like an insulin gene and we make insulin that way. I do think that's what you should expect for this exam. Now, as we progress through the paper, these questions may appear in question three. And my first prediction is going to be the investigation question. Over the years, the investigative question has taken the form of some kind of speciation or evolution question. And that means you need to be very well versed on your natural selection as well as your speciation explanations. And basically what they're doing is they're taking uh, evolution in current times, like um, antibiotic resistance or insecticide resistance, and they're taking an example of that now in today's society. They make an investigation about it, and then they ask you questions. The next question that you should expect to see in this exam is some kind of genetic 
across, right? You're going to have to do it. It's part of paper two. Um, and they started to lean away from just easy genetic crosses where it's just like um, a dominant and a recessive disorder or just a dominant and recessive trait. And they're leaning more and more towards co-dominant and incomplete dominant questions. And they do this because they are trying to test your knowledge on um, how this uh, perpetuates, how it occurs through generations, how some organisms are three different colors. You know, how is that possible if you only got two alleles? How do you get three colors? Now, that also links into blood groups. So if the question is on blood groups, which it may be, then that means you need to have enough knowledge on co-dominance and incomplete dominance, which is what that question is asking. Now, linked to this genetics question is, of course, dye hybrids, right? Dye hybrids have become a steady question throughout the years. And it used to be at the beginning of the paper, and it still might be, um, but they seem to have refigured it later on in the paper, asking you questions about um, what kind of cross is this? And you say it's a dihybrid because it's got um, four alleles or two sets of genes. Um, they might ask you the gametes of the parent. You know, they give you the parent and you've got to work out the gametes or work backwards, get the gametes and then work back to the parents. Now then getting into my last final two predictions on the questions that you may see, one of them is gonna be on artificial selection. Now, I think what's gonna happen here is there's gonna be some question maybe about how would artificial selection explain X? Like how would they explain how you uh, selected uh, for bigger corn kernels or how did you select for bigger cabbage? You know, something like that. Explaining artificial selection. And the final prediction is centered around human evolution. And they love asking this kind of question. So please expect it. It's going to be something like human skulls versus the Australopithecus skull or a gorilla skull. You know, something like that. Maybe they give you just one skull, but they're going to ask you questions like, uh, is this a human? Is this a gorilla? You know, which one is which? Um, give us visual reasons how you know this. I like to ask questions like draw a table for the differences or the similarities um, or a list. Actually, they would do a list for similarities. They do a table for differences. So you've got to be really, really well versed. And then the last thing linked to this is probably things like them asking for sources of evidence, you know, so things like fossil genetic, cultural evidence, all these things all link back to how well do you know your skeletons and how well do you know your sources of evidence. Now, as always, if you've liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and make sure your notifications are turned on and make sure you've also watched paper one, which I posted on Tuesday. And if you are writing your exam on Friday, good luck. I know you're going to do so well. For the matrix who are watching this video, you should consider joining my membership because I give away so many perks, including live lessons with me, uh, my cheat sheet summary notes, which is the easiest way to get a distinction at the end of the year, because they also tell you how they're going to ask this in the exam, what to say and how best to answer it. And there's so many other perks and you can join on my YouTube homepage by just clicking the join button. I hope you've all enjoyed this video and I'll see you again soon. Bye.